think if we can achieve those targets, then we'll still have a Great Barrier Reef in 50 or 100 years, but there's certainly no time to lose. If we don't take action, the collapse of our civilizations and the extinction of much of the natural world is on the horizon. Time is running out. We're facing a man-made disaster of global scale. The people have spoken. Leaders of the world, you must lead. The continuation of our civilizations and the natural world upon which we depend is in your hands. Thank you. The space market is growing between 8 to 10% a year. And we're not just wanting to grow at the same rate as everybody else. We want to increase our share of the global market. Um, and we think we can definitely do that. I think the main thing is for anyone who's looking for a job, you know, be curious about what we're doing look at the sort of jobs that are possible and think about it in a way perhaps they haven't thought about it before. We're not just about building an, an industry, we're, we're about helping and underpinning uh, growth across all of Australia's industries. Every time you use Google Earth to move around and the little blue dot is following, we forget that that little blue dot, every time it moves, is, is taking a signal from a GPS satellite. The most important things at the moment are to set in place a policy framework that allows collaboration between government departments, between industries and between academia. We're not limiting our vision. We want Australia to be part of missions with other countries. Australia has a lot to offer and we've got the smarts, we've got the intelligence, we've got the creativity, we've got the can-do attitude. We can do this, we can take our place uh, in this new space industry. When you buy the kilogram of bananas, or apples, those weights are traceable to this laboratory. What we know is that they are changing with respect to each other. There's a, a, a diversion. We don't quite know why. And the big worry, of course, is that they might all be changing because we don't have a, an absolute reference.
What's changing is the way we define the standards and gives us uh, the ability to do what we do to a much higher level of accuracy. There's been research going for decades and decades to continue to improve the measurement system. And we've got to a particular point where we can see a better system and we're ready to make that decision. By creating a very round sphere, you can accurately measure the diameter, which means you can accurately calculate the volume of the sphere and count the number of silicon atoms which are inside. We have strived so hard to make sure that the uncertainty on the changes are so low that it won't make a difference. If you imagine a tiny error in the, the mass of the kilogram and then expand that to the mass of a galaxy, so the exact definition of the kilogram clearly is one that underpins all that we do. So as technology changes, as our need for more and more accurate measurements grows, our definition is ahead of those needs. There will be someone somewhere who is doing this. If it's not me, it's someone else. The Australian Academy of Science, because questions need answers.